Hi everyone, my name is Romain Capinelli and I'm presenting the simulator on hardware, a low-cost and hard real-time hardware and loop simulator. And I'll be demonstrating that on the AUAV X2.1 autopilot board. So this is the outline for today. I will start to talk about the standard HITL simulation and the motivation for something else. I'll then introduce the SIH implementation and its performance. I'll then explain how to use the SIH, understanding the code and bringing modifications. And finally, the conclusion. This is the standard flow diagram for an HITL simulation. So you can see that the hardware is running the navigation control and estimation algorithms and is sending actuator signals to the desktop. The desktop is processing those actuator signals through a dynamics engine, such as JMAP Sim, Gazebo, or Xplane, and sends back sensor signals to the hardware. Sending actuator signals to the desktop computer and waiting to receive the sensor signals might be an issue as most common desktop computers are not designed to run in real time. So you might end up with inaccurate sampling time, such as the figure on the right. Most of the time, the controller is able to deal with this inaccurate sampling time, but in some cases, and for me it was during my thesis, when I was running an HITL setup for a tail sitter in Simulink, the controller was not able to stabilize the system. So what can we do about that? The HITL needs a real-time operating system to run in real-time, or RTOS. And most of the desktop computers are not real-time capable. But PX4 is running on Nutex, which is an RTOS. So why not using that as a simulator dynamics engine? Okay, let's go, let's do it. Let's code the dynamics of a quadrotor into PX4. So this brings us to the implementation of the SIH. So what do we need? We need the equations of motion of a rigid body with update for the inertial position, inertial velocity, the attitude which is described by the quaternion Q, and the body rate, omega b. We also did a model for the quadrotor, mainly how the quadrotor is generating forces and moments. We also need to reconstruct the sensor signals, such as GPS or IMU, and corrupt them with Gaussian noise. Don't worry, you can find all of these equations in the SIH documentation in the dev guide. There is a PDF report detailing the models used by the SIH. Well, this implementation seems to work as the pull request was accepted already. So let's talk about the performances. The SIH was challenged against JMAP Sim HITL and the real flight. You can see that both the SIH and the HITL give a good match with the real flight when flying a rectangular mission. However, the sampling time of the SIH is way more accurate and closer to the sampling time of the real flight, making it a hard real-time setup. The CPU usage was also investigated. This was tested on the AUAV X2.1 board, the SIH for a quadrotor vehicle running at 250 Hz was recorded to use less than 10% of the CPU. This is less than the EKF or the Mavling module. And two good news. The first one is that this is not dependent on the desktop performance, as the entire simulation is running on the hardware board. So you can have the cheapest desktop ever. This will still run fine. And the second one, the SH is available on all the PX4 compatible boards. Well, except FMU V2, which has a silicon errata. How to use the SIH? Well, this is as simple as selecting the SIH airframe, and that's it. 
JMAP SIM was also modified to be able to display the states of the vehicle running in the SIH. For this, JMAP SIM must be started with the flag dash O. A lot of parameters are available to simulate different quadrotors, such as the vehicle mass, the moments of inertia, the maximum thrust and torque generated by the engines, and the moment arms generating the rolling and pitching moments. Ok, let's demo that. The first thing to do is to open QRAM control, plug the autopilot and select the airframe SIH Quadcopter X. The physical properties of the quadrotor can be modified by the parameter starting by SIH underscore. But let's keep the default values for this demo. You might then want to set up your radio. Or if you don't have a radio, make sure to disable the RC loss failsafe. Now let's close QGUN control and have a look at the SIH documentation. This is the SIH documentation in the dev guide. And here is the PDF report for the dynamic model. It is available mainly for researchers willing to understand what is happening under the hood. This contains the equations of motion, the model for the forces and moments, the simple aerodynamic model, the sensor's reconstruction, some information on how the sensor noise standard deviation were obtained, as well as additional notes. And here is the information to set up the display using JMAP SIM. Close QGround control, this is done already. Unplug and replug the hardware autopilot. Then copy paste this command in the terminal to start JMAP SIM. Here we are. And JMAP SIM is open. Then we can open QRUN control which should auto-connect to JMAP SIM. Let's go to the fly view. And here is our vehicle at the airport. We can now use all the tools provided by QRUN control. The auto takeoff, go to a location, mission, Mavlink inspector, Mavlink console, etc. This video might be laggy, but don't worry. The simulation keeps running at a perfect sampling rate. This is because the computer doesn't have to send any signal back to the hardware to make it run. Ok, I'll fast forward. And let's land here. Now, you may want to download your log file and display it in flight review, for instance. But before ending this demo, let's have a look at the performances by typing perf in the Mavlink console. The SIH is recorded to be sampled at an average of 3998 microseconds with maximum deviation within 52 microseconds. This is what I call hard real-time. The SIH main loop is executed in less than 459 microseconds. The main loop could be 8 times slower, so there is room for more sophisticated model, like a fixed-wing aircraft for instance. Great! Now that you know how to use the SIH, Let's have a look at the code and modify it. At every iteration, the main loop will start by reading the motors, or more generally, the actuators. It will then generate the forces and torques based on the geometry of the vehicle. Then, the equations of motion of a rigid body are applied. These equations are the same for all vehicle modeled as a single rigid body. The SIH finally reconstructs the sensor signals, corrupts them with noise, 
and sends the IMU signals. The ground through signals, which are used for the display in JMAF SIM, and the GPS signals are sent at a lower rate. If a developer or a researcher wants to modify the SIH for a custom vehicle, the only modifications will be in reading the motors and generating the forces and torques. Additionally, custom parameters might be added too. To modify the sensor's noise level, to better represent sensor noise logged from a real flight for instance, the reconstruction of the sensor signals can be modified easily. Adding a custom sensor can be done in the function reconstructing the sensor signals. The custom sensor must then be published to UORB. OK, for this demo, we will bring four modifications to the code. 1. We now want to simulate an exarotor in X configuration. So we'll have to read not four, but six motor signals. And we will need to modify how the forces and moments are generated. Let's assume that the arm length is L roll, and the angle between two arms is 60 degrees. It gives us the equations for the vertical force and moments as shown. The vertical force is negative because the z-axis is defined as pointing down. 2. For our aerodynamics friend, we will modify the linear drag model into a quadratic drag, and this in one line of code. 3. We will also simulate a very noisy barometer, which will motivate the point 4 to add a distant sensor facing down. So let's have a look at the modified code for this example. In the folder airframes, the SIH airframe was modified to call the mixer EXA-X. It also configures 6 PWM output channels instead of 4. In the SIH module, in SIH.cpp, the function generate force and torques was modified to generate the forces and torques from our exacopter equations. And look, here is a second order drug model. We simply have to multiply by the norm of the velocity one more time. And down here is the barometer noise, which is increased to 50 cm standard deviation. This is in fact in the function reconstruct sensor signals. I decided to publish the distance sensor in the function send GPS to be published at 20 Hz as well. The standard deviation is chosen to be 0.05 m, the mean distance 0 and the max distance 30 m. A bit of trigonometry can give us the measured distance. The variance is the square of the standard deviation. And let's pretend a good signal quality as we simulate it as a laser sensor. The orientation is configured as downward facing. And finally, we store the timestamp and publish the URB topic. In sih.hpp, the header file for the URB topic, distance sensor, must be included, as well as the structure for it and the publication object. This is done at lines 127 and 28. And finally, we configure the number of motors to be 6. The function read motors will automatically read six motors instead of four. And that's it. How does the SIH behave with this code? So here is our vehicle at the airport. Let's open widget, analyze, and look for our distance sensor. Here it is. Mean distance, max distance, in centimeters. Here's the current distance in centimeters as well. We can clearly see the noise. And our covariance is 25 centimeters squared. Let's observe the current distance and take off. Now, how do we know we are not simulating a quadrotor? 
Well, let's have a look at the simulated PWM outputs. As you can see, we have six of them. And they are being modulated to produce the reference maneuver. So, here is our Exarotor being simulated in the SIH. It's time for the conclusion. So, for the pros. The SIH simulates the world PX4 autopilot. Not only the controller, but also the EKF, failsafe, mission, and all the other modes. It is running on the hardware in hard real-time. It is cheap. It's only the cost of the hardware board. The source code is available directly in C++. And I hope this video convinced you that the code is easy to modify. And for the cons? Well, everything is embedded in the hardware. So, you're kind of limited in computational power. But as we saw, not as limited. The environment is limited too. I cannot imagine like vision-based simulation or a simulated world with different obstacles. And this setup does not allow multi-vehicle simulation. Also, I would like to mention that the SIH was developed by Coriolis G when I was working for them. So all the credits should go to them. You can visit vogue-vtol.com to know more about them. Coriolis G is a Canadian company developing unconventional VTOL aircraft based on passive coupling mechanisms. It means there is no actuator to tilt the rotors, and the result is a very smooth transition. That's a somewhat uncommon technology, and it's patented, so feel free to visit their webpage. That's it, so thank you for your attention.